Nobody knew what an Alice Shad is. Nobody. Everybody asked me, what is an Alice Shad? Well, the Alice Shads were caught in Cologne until 1938, in quite large quantities. The Alice Shad population, which was very large in the River Garonne, has decreased considerably during the last couple of years. And we have to find out the reasons for this decreasing. The Alice Shad project for us is the most important German-French environmental project. The colleagues from France, from Midago, arrived on Sunday especially to bring us the Alushad larvae and eggs from France. Two Alushads have just been fitted with radio transmitters. Let's give it a try with the Alushads. What do you think? Yes, he said. That's a good idea. And that's how the whole thing started. But for me, the most exciting thing about this project was that we tried to re-establish something, at least partially, that was absolutely normal for our ancestors. In 1670, the Alleshad was known as Alze in the River Rhine and other German rivers. It is said these fish are the first ones that come up from the sea into the freshwater river. Fishermen caught countless quantities. Alishads at a market in Düsseldorf, at the time much larger quantities than salmon, and like the latter, a migratory fish, only with more bones. Anyway, bone or no bones, the fishermen were waiting for the Alishad to arrive in May. People also get that spring feeling, and suddenly the Alice Shads come up the River Rhine in thousands, thousands of Alice Shads. That's what it was like in Cologne, and they were caught in Pol. We can trace the tradition of catching the Alice Shad to about the 12th or 13th century. The tradition of the Pol Alice Shad festival, that was celebrated every year by the Cologne fishermen, is continued today. We actually managed to get a real Alice Shad here in Paul. Nowadays, only very few of these fish, which are related to the species of herring, find their way into the River Rhine. The Alice Shad has disappeared into the mists of time, not for no reason, but because of overfishing, environmental pollution, and other human interferences on the river. Rudy Hell is one of the last working fishermen on the Rhine. Even at the age of 75, you find him daily on his fishing boat, Anita II. As a child, he still saw the Alice Shads. First of all, in our family, we've been working as fishermen for 300 years. And my grandfather and great-grandfather, they caught the Alice Shad. My great-grandfather, at his time, the Alice Shads were still there in such great numbers, so they caught large horse carts full of them, and then they drove through the local villages with a bell, and they came out the housewives. They carried large buckets, bought the fish for 50 pfennigs, a large bucket full of fish. These times along the River Rhine are long gone. However, for the European Life Plus project, many people worked together in order to bring back the Alice Shad to this region. And in order to protect the last populations in France from suffering a similar fate to their ancestors on the Rhine about a hundred years before. Soon, young Alice Shads will migrate from the Rhine in the direction of the North Sea in order to live there for a couple of years until they return there to reproduce in the Rhine. Since we've already seen Alice Shads migrating into the sea and we also noticed that some Alice Shads are being caught in the North Sea as far as Sweden, I believe that time for the Alice Shad is a good one. And if everything works out well, the Alice Shads would also regularly pass again through Dusseldorf, the former fishing village on the Rhine that has a population of 600,000 inhabitants today. The biologist Andreas Scharwert is waiting for them here. He's employed by the Rheinische Fischereiverband, the Rhenish Fisheries Federation, which had the idea to re-establish the Alice Shad in the River Rhine, 
Their branch office is located in the Aqua Zoo in Dusseldorf, and from here the biologist coordinates the realization of the Alishad project of the European Union. Here at the Aqua Zoo, the visitors will soon have the opportunity to see Alishads. To give the Alishad the chance to settle again in the River Rhine, the project relies on the support from the southwest of France, because here the Alishad still exists. Near Bayonne sur Gironde, in the southwest of France. The Gironde is the estuary through which the rivers Garonne and Dordogne flow into the Atlantic Ocean. Here the young Alishads that come from the fresh water remain for a few weeks. It is there that they adapt themselves before their life in the salty sea begins. And from here they return after three to five years back into the rivers of France in order to spawn. They make their way out into a land of vineyards, into a land full of chateaux, such as Montbaziac, where a group of Alice Shad experts appear right now. A land full of ancient villages, such as Limeul, a small town located on the Dordogne River, a land where the sun often shines, a land where people love to eat and drink well, the region of Aquitaine. Only ten years ago, hundreds of thousands of Alishad still moved up the Dordogne to spawn. Here they find unfortified banks and riffles in the middle of the river, good for the Alishad. At this location of La Gulou, near the city La Lande, we find a spawning ground ideal for the Alishad. Here you can see a deeper, slow-flowing pool section. Following that, a more shallow area where a stronger and eddying current occurs. At the transition between these zones, the Alishad spawn during the night. Shops and restaurants used to offer Alishads here in the past. There used to be Alishad festivals here as well. They were sold even at the roadside. Grand Alloz is the French name for the Alishad. Alloz related to the old German word Alza. In the year 2007, only very few Alishads arrived, and since then, the formerly largest European population has not recovered. Since that time, it is forbidden to catch the Alishad in the Gironde area. Bergerac, a city on the Dordogne River. The Salmon Fountain a symbol for another species of migrating fish that pass through here. Since 1995, the project partner Association Migado has been breeding salmon here. Thus, this formerly extinct migratory fish species has successfully been re-established. Recently, genetic comparisons are made to ascertain if salmon, having been bred, will one day return into the rivers. For instance, here at the River Corbez. Other migratory fish species that Bigado look after, the Alishad, has some spawning places near Bergerac to reproduce. During flood conditions, like now, it is, however, rather unlikely. Today we see young chub at the riverbank near Bergerac. It is near Bergerac that the adult Alishad returnees encounter the first obstacle on their way to the spawning grounds. So we are in front of the dam of Bergerac, just up just downstream uh, the city of Bergerac. During the 80s, uh, a fish ladder uh, was built in order to, uh, to get back uh, an Adromus fish uh, population uh, in the Dordogne. There was around uh, 100,000 shads that claimed this dam. So we know that the fish ladder works, but at this time there was uh, many more shads than now. So there is, uh, we, can, uh, we can think that there is a, a trouble of a number of fish, and the more fish you have, the more the fish ladder is efficient. However, only very few Alice Shads appear, very few. They have to overcome not only the dam of Bergerac, but also the one of Toulier and the one of Mozac in order to reach traditional spawning grounds. We have already talked about the influence that the transversal obstacles have on the Alishad population. Of course, there are also other explanations for the current situation of the Alishad population in this region. 
One in particular is the fisheries. If you draw on a population way beyond their capacity to reproduce, which most likely has been the case for the last decades in this region, it is clear that the population in this region is not able to survive permanently. Just as on the Rhine River, the Alice Shads used to be caught here in the Garonne. In recent years, more than half of the reproductive stock. Here we see a traditional net, once used during periods of high water. The prohibition means a big change for many of the fishermen. Yes, the Alishads used to be much more numerous in the Garonne. A fishing ban was implemented five years ago to allow the regeneration of the Alishad population. For the companies making their living off fishing, this constitutes a big problem. Some fishermen have supposedly lost 60% of their earnings. They demand an investigation to find out if the main reason for the disappearance of the Alishad is overfishing or lack of reproduction. The main office of the French project partner Migado. Director Sylvie Boyer Bernard and her colleagues systematically monitor the spawning grounds of the Alice Shads. A team consisting of specialist Isabelle Co and dedicated biology students investigate currently how many Alice Shads spawn between the dams of Toulière and Mozac. The spawning of the Alice Shads occurs after darkness has set in and is rather noisy. The couples swim at the surface and beat their tails quite vehemently at the water surface. And this activity is loud. In order to record this activity, a hard disk recorder with a microphone has been fitting on the bank. Every evening this appliance is put into place again at the familiar spawning grounds. Thus they record the spawning activity on site. Then, the data are analyzed in the office on the computer. At the end, it is calculated how many Alice Shads have spawned here in the season. And also, here exist rare recordings of Alice Shads during their mating ritual. A female Alice Shad can spawn up to 600,000 eggs. In contrast to other fish species, the eggs do not mature simultaneously. Each single female spawns several batches during one season. Afterwards, the exhausted animals die. When several years ago, one of the bulkheads at the Dam of Toulier broke, a much larger quantity of our shads arrived in the spawning grounds in comparison to previous years, even though the size of the population had already decreased at that time. A proof that the dams are a problem for the fish, say the experts. The dam has a so-called fish lift, which enables the fish to overcome the barrage and to continue their migration. One of the sensitive fish is no longer alive. The other two are being anesthetized with clove oil. Now, the scientists from Epidor are equipping the fish with a radio transmitter. Everything has to be done quickly. However, the Alishads are not being released above the dam, but in front of the dam. Thus, the observers can find out if they find their way to the fish elevator again, and if yes, how long it takes. Now the fish come out slowly from anesthesia. In a few minutes, when they are fully awake, we will set them out again so that they continue their migration.
When you hear the signal, then you can determine with the mobile antenna where the Alushad currently is. Quand on entend le signal, on a une antenne qui est orientable et on peut comme ça dire que la lose est dans telle ou telle direction. And if you go further upstream, you can make a triangular recording and thus get an even more accurate identification. Each fish has its own frequency. As each fish is marked with a transmitter, each of which has its own frequency, we know which fish is swimming by at any moment. And when the marked fish have passed the Dam of Toulière, there is still the Dam of Mozac to be overcome, before they arrive at their traditionally important spawning grounds, which are located in the middle course of the Dordogne River. We know now that, for example, in the Dordogne, less than 10% of the Alishads that swim up the Axis succeed in swimming through all three dams of the Bergerac region. In the Garonne, at the first dam near Golfech, it's about the same. In a given year, only about 30 to 50% manage to overcome the dam. The Garonne and the dam of Golfech. Here, the company Electricité de France, which supports the Alishad project financially, operates a hydropower plant and also a nuclear plant. As you can see from the records, from time to time, single Alice Shads pass the observation point. Today, some white bream and barbel, but no Alice Shad. Also here, you can find a fish lift. You could use it to get Alice Shads for breeding purposes, if any of them were found in it. The fish lift has been in operation since 1987 and we have noticed that there are still considerable migrations of Alishads during the years 1999 and 2000. Around about 500,000 were counted at that time. Then, when there were still a lot of Alishads in this area, the idea was born to use these populations for the reintroduction project on the River Rhine. Today, only few parent fish were brought here from Golfesh. However, since 2008, the partner organization, Migado, has sent millions of tiny larvae to Germany. They come from a cleverly devised delivery ward for Alice Shad. So here, uh, we started uh, at the beginning uh, to uh, together around uh, 300 grams of eggs uh, per uh, female coat uh, in the river. And uh, with experience uh, and uh, some tests, we managed to uh, together now, uh, when we are lucky, uh, between uh, one and one dot four kilograms of eggs per female. And then uh, we uh, we started with uh, low survival rates, um, around uh, twenty percent from the eggs to the larvae. Now we are uh, between uh, forty and uh, fifty percent. So we are quite happy with uh, these results uh, too, and we hope uh, that, it will, uh, that it will go on. The water for the breeding facility in Brush is taken from a canal directly close by. Before the water comes into contact with the sensitive Alishad eggs, it is carefully cleaned and disinfected to prevent fungal infestation and diseases. And from this breeding facility, approximately 450,000 Alishad larvae come to Germany in the summer of 2012 and appeared on TV. The small Alishads benefit from the big European Union. They finance half of the entire Alishad project with their support program Life Plus Nature. The tiny creatures are about one centimeter long and around about two weeks old. After their long journey, they are put into round channel tanks to get used to the cool river water that today has only a temperature of 15 degrees. After several more hours, they will be released into the river. In this case, this is the Lippa River, a tributary of the River Rhine, in which partly nature-like structures have been re-established. 
The increased salt load of the Lippa, which is caused by local mining industry, is no problem for the Alashad larvae. And the competition from the offspring of other fish is not so high as in the Zieg River, for example, where the Alishads have been released in other years. From previous years, we know that fry of other species has to be considered as the main predator for the young Alishad larvae, due to the fact that you find less fry here, and that this year we have released the larvae very late. We expect that the fish, our Alishads, show particularly good development chances and survival rates. The first release of Alishad in the Lippa. First of all, a small reinforcement. Then the 400 kilometer long migration begins from the Lippa into the Rhine and then downstream in the direction of the North Sea. The Alishads will be underway until the autumn. The experts hope that in a couple of years, maybe 2,000 of them will return from the sea into the Rhine. 2,000 Alishads out of 450,000 larvae that have now begun their long way that is to last for several months. Until now, nobody knows if it will be really successful to re-establish the Alishad permanently in the Rhine River. In the year 2008, the ministers for the environment of the German federal states, North Rhine-Westphalia and Hesse, released the first hundred French-bred Alishads into the Rhine. During the next years, a total of almost seven million young fish followed, which wandered from the tributaries of the Rhine, where they had been released, up to the North Sea. In order to increase the success of the project, there is now also an Alishad breeding facility in Germany, which is sponsored by the federal state of Hesse. Inauguration of the station in Asla with guests on the occasion of the Hesse Day in the summer of 2012. 130 bigger Alishads that once came as larvae from France circling here. These anandromous fish seem to be constantly moving around. Walter Fricker from the Hessian district government of Gießen came up with the idea to breed the Alishad on the site of a company that sorts and recycles waste or burns it for electricity generation. The waste heat that is generated by burning the garbage supplies the required temperature for the Alishad basins and ensures electricity supply. The operator of the facility financed the construction and the interior equipment. For this they receive so-called eco points. Hermann Hoffmann could have acquired these points very easily by effecting a compensation payment instead. Yes, this would have been the most convenient, but that is not what we want. We would like to do something positive with this money in our region, for nature and the environment, in our home region. In an effort to give something back to nature, what the human beings have taken away from it, the project has come a step forward by opening the breeding facility. This facility underlines a wish to take part in creation to some extent. It is not always so easy and of course success is not guaranteed, but it is worthwhile trying. And I'm very happy to show you for the first time some Alice Shads that were bred here on site in Asla. A big thank you to our colleague David Clavé, who, on the spur of the moment, drove here from France, brought us the eggs, and helped us tirelessly to get the whole thing working. Then David Clavé also helped to hatch his babies in the neighboring country, and he trained the German colleagues. The commitment of the young French colleague is a good example of international cooperation. It was this cooperation that won the Alishad project an award, among others, by the European Union on May. 2012. This is not just any award from Brussels. The intention was to filter out the four best projects out of a larger quantity of life sponsored projects. The best projects to filter out the best of the best was the MyFish project. As representative of the local government in the partner region of Aquitaine, I'm particularly pleased that the project illustrates the good German French relationship. It also shows how well both regions, Hesse and Aquitaine, cooperate. Also the country where the Alishad changes between Rhine and the North Sea has sent a representative to take part in the official opening ceremony. The country where the port of Rotterdam is located, the starting point for the route that the migrant fish will take up the river Rhine.
The Ellis shad is an important fish for Holland, and together with the salmon, for example, it is a flagship species for the whole fish stocks. This shows the River Rhine works, again, as a functioning ecosystem. The newborn fish in Asla are expected to contribute to this. Employers of the waste recovery facility help here as babysitters. In the blue containers you can find the Artemia, small planktonic organisms for feeding the shads. These are being fed every 15 minutes with 15 milliliters of Artemia. And the small container is filled with dry food. Every two hours the fish are additionally being fed with the dry food. The daily work is supported by the trained biologists and hobby anglers. This is the role I would like for our fishermen to be perceived by the public as competent conservationists whose aim is sustainability. And thus, Alishad larvae for the Rhine River grow here as well as in the French town of Bruch. Some of these larvae remain in the breeding facility in Asla to become adult and mature fish one day. And as in a natural environment, they change here from fresh water into salt water. Progress today consists of the fact that we try to rear a genital stock here in order to be independent of the situation in France that is currently deteriorating. Maybe we can then establish a population ourselves here. La Rochelle on the Bay of Biscay. Visitors of the aquarium of La Rochelle can see adult shads here, swimming in between the small sardines and the anchovies. Young alice shads can be found here behind the scenes. The 550 fish in the saltwater basin are one year old. Similar to the procedure at the German facility in Asla, the alice shads will grow here outside of the rivers to their full sexual maturity under competent and scientific supervision by biologists of the project partner Erstea and by the Aquarium of La Rochelle. Here at the Aquarium at La Rochelle, our assignment under the Life Cross project is to breed alice shad from larvae to their mature age. In this way we contribute to the regeneration of the alice shad population in the Gironde estuary as well as in the estuary of the Rhine River. We measure among others the quantity of food, the water velocity and the living conditions. The intention is to increase our knowledge about the breeding of alice shads in an artificial environment. The approximately four-year-old specimen would be almost old enough for spawning. In conditions of captivity, spawning has never been observed in alice shad so far, and in general in migratory fish, much more complicated than for instance in carp or trout, which are typically used in aquaculture. Currently, we have an active experiment underway in order to understand the evolution of the gestation under control conditions. Our aim is to find out if the gestation is effective and how it works. We have a reservoir of plant fish under control conditions. This makes it possible to develop the artificial reproduction of these fish coming from captive breeding. In this way we can decrease the number of extractions of parent fish out of their natural environment. The project partner, Smeag, undertakes a survey on the Garonne for finding young alice shads that were born in the natural environment without human support. To do this, it's necessary to find suitable fishing gear. The professional fishermen, Sébastien and Philippe Gautier, who work for the project partner Smeag, discuss with biologist Alain Chaumel the right gear, the best material, and further possible reasons for the decrease of the population of the alice shads in the river. We do not know much about the alice shads at all, so the cause for the threats to the population remain unknown. The alice shads reproduce, but what happens after that? Do the eggs develop well? Are there enough larvae hatching from the eggs? Do the alice shad larvae live well and develop properly in the Garonne? These are all unanswered questions so far. A survey of young fish in the Garonne River. The search for young alice shads begins. Nobody really knows the environmental demand of the juveniles and where they linger in the river. This is going to be a long evening here. The brothers, Philippe and Sébastien Gautier, as well as biologist Jean-Luc Belriva, accept this situation to verify if there is offspring in the Garonne. 
Are there young shads among them? These are small bleak. Each finding can be useful for future generations of Alice shads. Which areas of the rivers are well suited for them? Could this be one? It's not so easy to tell with the unaided eye with these little ones. In the end, biologist Andrea Schaber is sure. Unfortunately, this is not an Alice shad. Oh, disappointing. Back at the Lippe River in Germany. A little way downstream from the spot where the many Alice shad larvae were released one month ago, biologists are looking for young Alice shads. Like their colleagues at the Garn River, biologists want to know if they are still in the Lippe and whereabouts in the river they are located. Close to the river bank, the biologists apply an electrofishing method. In the water, they use a battery-operated appliance to create an electric field which stuns the fish for seconds only. Then they are being hauled into the boat with a dip net. All of the fish except for Alice Shad are put back into the water. In addition, they use fine mesh nets to search for young Alice Shads in the middle of the river. Today, not even a single one can be found. The Alice Shad is a migratory fish from which it is still unknown how long the young fish stay in the river section that they've been released in or move downstream. It's a shot in the dark. Despite all the imponderabilities, there are supporters beside the European Union who carry the project through either by their collaboration or by their financial aid, such as the Hit Umweltstiftung, which has been a participant from the beginning. The main thing here is that people really get involved, re-establishing a certain species and using a migratory fish, relaunching an entire natural process. This is indeed an enormous challenge. Meanwhile, Rudy Hell has pulled 31 young Alice Shads out of the Rhine River for the project. It is proof that the Alice Shads that have been released upriver migrate to the North Sea. However, only a fraction of those Alice Shads get as far as the uh, anchored stone net. Thousands can pass unseen. For experts dealing with the Rhine and its fishing resources, it would be something very special if the legendary Alice Shad could repopulate the Rhine River again permanently. Actually, I only knew the Alice Shad through literature, from a few old pictures, from anthologies. I never had any contact with live Alice Shads. This was something completely exotic and therefore extremely fascinating. Very exciting to attend this project from the start. Until now, biologist Andreas Schabert was one of the few people in Germany who knew exactly what an Alice Shad looked like. His colleague Marion Villa, who works at the Aquazoo, is interested in the difference between an Alice Shad and a Twait Shad. Here you can see very well these dark spots behind the gill cover might serve as a distinctive feature between Alice Shad and Twait Shad. The Twait Shad clearly shows four spots here, whereas you can only see one spot, at least on this Alice Shad here. In order to be on the safe side, Andrea Schabert searches for more distinctive characteristics. Here, these are really narrow, long gill rakers, which are very typical of the Alice Shad. There are always more than 90 of them. This Alice Shad still was very young, therefore it's smaller than the Twait Shad. In general, Alice Shad attain a larger size than Twait Shad. A Danish fisherman has sent us the Twait Shad thinking it was an Alice Shad. In order to judge the development and success of the project, it's very important for scientists to receive information about the catch of Alice Shads along the River Rhine and the North Sea. If you think about it, the Alice Shads, what a gigantic territory, what an enormous distance they cover during their life cycle. They also wander several hundred kilometers along coastal areas. It's impossible to collect data about such populations and receive information about their propagation, so it's important to receive a feedback when such fish are being caught by professional fishermen or even by anglers. Feedback about a species that threatens to become exotic again, now also in France. If we cannot find the causes for the disappearance of the Alice Shads, if the pathways for the Alice Shads are not smoothed out in future anymore, if the breeding of the Alice Shads are not continued. There are many hopes in this project. A lot of work is involved. But it's a chance, a chance for the swimming herald of the spring, who centuries ago came up the rivers in May.
this is a major issue to work on. And uh, we worked uh, on it a little, and uh, there is uh, still some uh, some job to do.